apparently there's some internet issues. So, um... Yeah, I was worried they went to the wrong server after saying what server it was supposed to be. But I guess they actually dropped out of Battle.net. So they're back and trying to get the lobby set up. Panda also was supposed to pick a second map, and he took a long time to do that. So it is going to be Galactic Process, Frost, then Frozen. And it should be happening quite soon. So, kind of funny. Um, yeah, I don't know that much about Uzikati or how to say his name. I'm going to go, like, really weeaboo with it, I suppose. When it's probably, like, actually, like, you know, pronounced very, very differently. But anyways, uh, he is a French Terran. And, um, Panda Me, if you don't know, is an American Zerg. I uh, actually did a show match with him on Thursday, so we really got to see uh, what type of his form he was in, which wasn't bad. <clears throat> Don't know much about the Terran, though. Don't know much about the Terran. But TVZ it is, and it should be getting made soon. <sighs> soon. Please take the lobby. No, not happy. Everyone just spamming emotes in the chat. Oh god. Oh dear. <clears throat> um. Be nice if they got rid of the screen that at least talked like they usually do when they are waiting for players to be ready. I don't know who they you are talking about. Where have you been? I literally just be talking to you on a delay, which is not much of a conversation. Or to myself, or idle ramblings about how Korea is so far advanced in straw technology that we have no hope when they eventually take over the world. I can also sit here and complain about the fact that the lobby takes forever to get made. <clears throat> There's one thing that tilts casters, and it's not necessarily when players are rude or like disgruntled or. Uh, when bugs occur and like lobby making and stuff, although that is pretty annoying. There's downtime. And a lot of downtime. So. Yeah. If I knew these players better, I could go on and on about them, but I actually I don't really know a lot about them. Just the Panda and me played recently in a show match. He's on Roots. Um, and that's. Uh, they're both GM, I guess. Information is great. Knowledge is power. <clears throat> and we're still waiting. I think they had another bout of internet issues. A little bit of a conversation that I've already responded to text-wise happening about the extended downtime. First of all, I already cast today, so screw you, my voice hurts. Second of all, yeah, Base Street TV actually got a lot of uh, credits for basically- I guess Ruby's not gonna come anymore. Um, he's having too many internet issues. For basically, like, yeah, like, you know, refusing to have a 20 minute break screen when, when DreamHack had downtime, refusing to have an hour and a half. You know, instead we'd play 2v2s or something, and we'd actually fill that downtime, and that's great. But we are actually one of the few <laughs> streams that do that. So on the occasion that you see a longer than two minute break, um, deal with it. God damn. Go, go do your own thing for a second, alright? Come, come back uh, in six minutes, right? We're finally into it, and hopefully that was the uh, last bit of long downtime. I think what happened was Aromi has been, um, he's like an admin for this, right? Um, and, and everyone knows that. He's supposed to be in the lobby, but I think there's too many internet issues happening, so they just kind of went without him. So that's that's fine, as long as the game's started, and as long as that's, that's okay. But here we go. Now we're ready. In the top right, as uh, the green zerg. He is Roots Panda Bear Me for Team USA. There you go. And to the bottom left, as the Teal Terran, he is Uzikoti. 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 
Something like that. Don't know much about this guy, but the whole gist of these show matches is to highlight up-and-comers of each individual scene. So while Xenocider isn't exactly an up-and-comer, he's been around for a long time. A lot of the, the uh, USA players have been around for a long time. They're not, you know, Neeb or Scarlet or something like that that has a lot of popularity already. And a lot of players still don't know about them unless they, they watch Fear Dragon all the time. And then maybe they know about them. But same thing a little bit for the underdogs of Team France. They have this tournament called the Underdogs uh, that eventually faces the top dogs. And it's a cool little thing for uh, the French scene in particular. And I guess they just kind of decided to have a, a nice little show match between the two um, rising scenes. See who ended up having the better rising scene. And so far, the score in total is tied up one to one because it's best of three. Winner of the best of three gets a point for their team. And then those points are best of five. So the first two, three points wins. Not complicated, but hard to represent visually with the limited amount of space and scoreboards <laughs> on StarCraft 2 overlays. <clears throat> We do look so... Uh, yeah, okay, so it's gonna be the same build we saw from Xenocider and what we saw from Byun all this morning. And that is to be expected. If Panorami had to take a guess, take a gander at what's, what's, uh, what's gonna happen, it would be that this was the build, so we should be expecting it totally fine. As I said, I, I know a little bit more about Panda Bear Me, just after watching him and, you know, watching some of Breaking Out and whatnot. So I know that he's decent, uh, but I don't know much of anything about this guy. I mean, uh, apparently, uh, we, we know now that he's not that much of a cheeser. Galactic Process could have been a 3 rack Reaper map, and that wasn't his go-to. Um, but is he a super, like, turtly player? Is he gonna highlight his drops, or is he gonna highlight his mechanics more? Actually, I have no idea. And what was interesting and funny is that they both don't have any idea about each other, too. So they were asking, I mean, it was actually a case where Panamy was like, are you Protoss? And, and he said, no, I'm Terran. And then he was like, you're Zerg, right? Like confirming. And Panamy was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm Zerg, sorry. Um, so they really, you know, they're, they're not well known to each other either. So the play, uh, play styles are um, kind of up in the air for now. So maybe Panamy has to be a little bit more paranoid about confirming the scout on this build. Give a nice pick of Rifkin there. I mean, he's not actually here. Kind of awkward. I just have this picture and everyone thinks he's here and I'm just taking up all the casting time. <laughs> that Rifkin speak! Uh, but maybe. Thanks to, I think I missed Tanith's Finest for the seven month resub. Happened uh, about 20 minutes ago. I think I missed it anyway. It's all loopy, man. I don't know what's happening. The Overlord does get in to scout just about everything because the Marines weren't in position to stop it, but it's not the most revealing scouts. I'm like, oh my god, he went for four CCs right off the bat. What what a crazy guy. No, it's something that's pretty expected and still has power despite being scouted, which is a nice thing about it too. Now, Panda Bear Me is going to go for double evolution chambers. He could be trying to go for Mutaling Bling, which I brought up in the last best of, I believe, that it seems to be... Uh, when it comes to the Zergs, you know, we can talk differently about Protoss and Terran for each region, but for the Zergs, Europeans typically go for Roaches, uh, although that's definitely been more in flux lately and more stylistic to each individual European player. Um, while Koreans are going Mewling Bling, and North Americans are a lot more keen on copying whatever the Koreans are doing, so they usually are going Mewling Bling as well, just the mechanics aren't quite as, as up to par, right? Like. They usually never are when it comes to Koreans. <clears throat> so they're, they're pretty damn good at this game, right? Um, so that's uh, what I expect from Panda Me, and I believe that's what he did at the in the show matches too. So not unexpected here. Does he have enough lings to deal with this though? He scouted the build, but maybe he underestimated the timing of it. A grenade even is getting in here with this Reaper, and that could have really helped out. But oh my god, I think Panda Me just lost. The grenade does help out a little bit. Takes care of the queens. Queens are not focus firing the medevacs now. They start to a little bit, but nope, that's it. GG. Game number one goes to the, uh, the French. Thank you, too. I would prefer not to for the six-month resub. Keep it up, Beatrice TV. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the next map will be, what was it, Frost? Frost and then Frozen, immediately made by Romeo, I guess has fixed his internet issues. 
Wait, am I supposed to change? I can't keep track of what's supposed to be on EU and whatnot. Okay, I, 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 re I'm on top of things. It's supposed to go to NA, I'm pretty sure right now. For whatever reason, Xena said it was okay being on Europe, and he did win, so, you know, kudos to him for being on the, uh, more laggy region, but I think Panda and me would like to go to NA. That was an unfortunate, unfortunate little situation that happened just now, as that wasn't... There's not many excuses I can make for Panda Bear Me. He scouted the build. It's a very common build. Um, there's really not a lot of surprises to it. Lots of people boost over with the medevac and drop and immediately go into the natural, so it's not like the positioning was unexpected or something like that. It just was he was a little underprepared, and that's something that you're going to kind of slap yourself over and hopefully do better next time, but... Um, I think his, his, his pride might be a little bit damaged. <laughs> Mods won't show. Huh. I have a lot of trouble making lobbies on NA. You know why I don't have any trouble making lobbies on NA? Because I am North American. North America loves North America. Yeah, they're actually right. It's been... It's not as buggy as it one was once upon a time where there was literally, like, every single time you made a lobby, it was... Um, Wheel of Death. Um, took about five minutes to get over. And then lobby bugs for the invites, which would take a long time to fix. And then... Um, clicking the start button and hearing the cancel sound as opposed to the go sound. Like, at one point, all three of those things were happening at the same time, and it was probably the buggiest time of StarCraft or Battle.net's, um, specifically, history. But it's kind of it's creeping back in, you know? The, the circle of wheel of death or whatever is coming back, and... I think lobby invites are the most have been fixed, which is nice, because that was super annoying. But looks like the French Terran player's name is different, which is unfortunate because I'm already having trouble <laughs> remembering and pronouncing his name. <clears throat> so that's great, but yay! Or yay, it's not that enthusiastic, but yay, is Uzikoti for Team France. And that is Frost. Frost, 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 Frost. Don't, don't lag out. Don't lag out. Don't lag out. Okay, there we go. Thanks to X Kawaiian for the 22 month resub. Something, something dark side. I don't get it. But thank you for the resub. We're on Frost now, and maybe these spawn positions in this map will be a little more favorable to our Zerg player in the bottom right for Team USA. He is Panda Bear Me. In the top left, just went over it. He is a Tiltaran, yay! But actually, his uh, go-to name is Uzi Koti, which one day I'll be able to pronounce correctly. The next matches still are not confirmed for me. Take it back. The next match is confirmed, but the... Um, oh wait, no. Wait, yes? Okay, so the next match is confirmed. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Never mind, I'm, I'm silly. The next match is confirmed because there's only four players per team. So the ace match in the overall best of um, five is actually going to be, you know, whoever they, they send out again, basically. I guess they, they choose. Or maybe it's already pre-chosen, I don't know. That might be pre-chosen, but the point is it's going to be a best of one of the coin flip about the server. If it gets to that point... So that means that the next best of three, the last best of three, is going to be between the last players available. Bales and Shadone, which will be a PvP. Fun stuff. I'll see if they can actually take it to the ace match. Terran player here, because his name is too damn hard to pronounce. Because I, I feel like, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm actually doing fine. But I can't check chat every, not, every time I, I question it to confirm or not. 
And you'll probably tell me how to say it, and I won't be able to say it anyway, so why would I, why would I even bother? Um, he got a free win, kind of, last game, you know? And it wasn't because it was a build order win, or an understandable, like, oh, well, what Terran drops over there, that's just weird. No, it was definitely Panda Bear Me mistiming the defense. Um, Zerg right now really is a lot about having the lightest defense possible, so you can macro immediately afterwards, but still don't die <laughs> to the attack. And that's a balancing act that at any point in, in the game can be broken. You know, you lose the queens, you're dead. You lose the lings, you're dead. Um, you don't get, a, you know, run to a drop fast enough, you lose 20 drones, and then, and then you're dead or something like that. So, it's understandable that it happens every now and then. It's just really unfortunate that it happens for Panda Bear Me in a televised, well, televised, uh, streamed match. That's just when you're like, oh, I really wish people didn't see that. Because <laughs> I'm sure he's played against that a billion times and done fine against it a lot of times. Just quite unfortunate. And not a good confidence booster. <laughs> uh, it is for our Terran, but not for our Zerg. Uh, unfortunately, no SCV scout went down, so this Reaper's been confused for quite some time. It actually went here, and then it, it went down here, and I guess it just it was confused and didn't know what it was doing. So finally, it's going to get a scout, but only after the third base has been put down, after speed has finished. And maybe because it is such a late scout, it'll get into the main base, just because that awkward kind of timing. But um, I guess at the very least, as long as it sees the third base, it's already a lot of intel to gather. And in some cases, is enough. Most Zergs are droning up their third base, but sometimes, like our last best of three, they do go for a Ling Baneling attack. Now that's unlikely on Frost with cross position, but just, you know, throwing it out there, the Reaper would like to double check, get back in there and suicide. Eventually. Uh, Overlord's gonna suicide, speaking of, and we'll see the build. He didn't see the barracks, but seeing the starport timing is just as good, really, and, and seeing the amount of marines as well. That's enough scouting, to be honest. And, uh, he knows what's up. So now, which is about getting that same amount of lings that he was getting, just 10 seconds sooner. And he should be able to defend against it. I have to pay attention to what exactly the follow-up is for a Terran. So one engineering bay to complete the wall off. Frost in vertical or horizontal positions does have a lot of potential for follow-up tank push or follow-up five barracks uh, push with or without tanks. But cross position, I don't think it does. I think it's 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 third base double engineering bay or. You're, you're in for a bad time. In, in my opinion. I mean, I'm sure he can sometimes make it work on ladder and stuff, but... It's hard to run across this map, because ideally... Pandemi pushes this back and then seriously gets on top of his creep spread. And by the time... Uh, Yay <laughs> is ready to go, it's like up to here and it's no gusto. The stem goes in and Pandemi does have his lings and queens in position. Maybe still not enough lings, but on creep and with more... Okay, there's more lings on the way. Uh, yeah, Terran could have tried to stutter step and, and done godlike micro like Bion and taking a couple of lings down with him but the chances of losing his medevac was a little too high it was already being focus fired but it's usually not about the first drop it's about the second third and fourth combined with the push and you have the drop here you do have extra barracks coming down in the main plus one on the way overlord scout sees that it won't be a third cc and that is something very important to scout panorama he cannot be too greedy uh, when it comes to uh, his units or his tech. He can't go for like a super fast Spire and all in with the Spire tech. He's gonna need some Banelings eventually, but um, Spire probably will be useful too. Just take care of those Medivacs and those drops. What am I in? Might splash the Marines too. Oh my god, that What am I in was such a betrayer. Oh my good god, did you just see that? That's a plant. That is a pro Zurich What am I in? Well, unfortunately, that uh, unfor you know won't do very much, but at least the medevac will survive. He could try and pick up this betrayer widow mine, but why would you? It did a terrible job. I like a sport crawler on the high ground. That could have helped out. Having a drop here and a drop here, you see a lot of Terrans have massive success. Oh, that gets seven drones. Okay, you kind of made up for what happened earlier, widow mine, I guess. 
Uh, anyway, that can deny a lot of creep having the two drops on either side, because Frost does get a little spread apart uh, when you look towards the, uh, the fourth base, especially. Um, third base is going down, but uh, later than ideal, and of course with only one engineering base, so it is still more about this five racks push that's coming forward here, and this should do some damage. Pandemimi wanted to have his creeps at a little farther out by the time this happened, unfortunately not the case. The scan should go down and kill all these live creep tumors, what a bummer. But he does have failings. Failings speed is about to finish. There the Marauders go in front, and that's going to be very helpful, but the control of Meta by me so far saves his Banelings. Scared of that one would of mine. More Banelings on the way. Matter Hatchery actually kind of screwed him over here as it creates a bit of a choke. Not, I don't I don't super like that position for the Macro Hatchery. But he's coming in now. The wood of mine is going to get a decent hit on the Lings. The Banelings are being controlled quite nicely, not exploding on those Marauders. The Lings deal with that, but they still have to actually reach those Marines. And despite Ye being on creep, the Banelings aren't connecting with the Marines quite yet. So this should be that opportunity. And okay, they do just pick up, which is, I think, the better choice there instead of trying to split or run around. He's on creep. They can't outrun him. Uh, speed Banelings. Upgrades not quite done for a Terran player either. Only at 1 versus 1-1. One, one, and, of course, 2-2. Two, two, way far ahead for Panda Bear Me. No Meatless quite yet, as he is investing a lot of attention, as well as minerals, into this defense. But once he pushes this back entirely, it should be all about those mutas for one or two minutes. Now, the third base is done. The second entry base is finally on the way. But a lot was sacrificed from the Terran to do a build like that. And I think in any other position on Frost, it is so much better. But Cross position was always going to be questionable. Uh, off of creep is also questionable, so Panda Remy can't get too confident here. Finally, the mutas are on the way, and that's going to help not just take out Medivacs, but snipe Widow Mines, maybe? Snipe Marauders, as they do run forward to try and snipe Banelings or snipe Buildings. And of course, if the Terran is too hesitant to move on to creep, the mutas will eventually say, like, okay, well, I guess you're not going to push, and they will counterattack. And I don't see many missile turrets, in fact, none at all. So that could be a a problem in the future. 2-2 Two -two is done for Panda Bear Me. Only just started for the Terran. <clears throat> Uzikoti. Uzikoti. Uh, creep spread, I mean, that's not going to really affect much for some time. The fourth base is, is probably, if it is going to be built, it's going to be built. Um, in the main or, or somewhere along there. Really heavily supply blocked, that's quite a problem. Now, thinking about different ways to engage against this Zerg that has defended, deflected so well so far, and using this choke is, is definitely not a bad idea. It would be more abusive if there was a couple of tanks with this, though. Nice Ling run by, catches a lot of SCVs unprotected. Where are the reinforcements from? Yay. <laughs> I wish his name was actually Yay. That would be so much easier. But uh, they don't seem to be any. <laughs> 70 CDs go down, which is not too much, but unfortunately a lot of buildings are going to go down and he cannot lose that third. Oh my god, do not lose that third base. Oh my god, he's going to lose it. He didn't lift. He was too focused on the main attack, and I don't think this main attack can win. There's so many Marauders, that certainly will soak up a lot of the Baneling shots, but Muta's Lings can take care of that, and he has to lift up. There's also so many Medivacs contributing to what is looks like an okay army supply, but really isn't, and I think this is game. Pandemic brings back 1-1. I really, really do not- I, I really don't like the choice of build execution for this map. But also, letting your third command center die to a Ling run by was pretty bad. And that is game. That's- that's- that's it, man. 2-2 two, two can't save you now. Liberators can't save you now. And Pandemimi should feel confident enough to push off of Creep once he consolidates his forces. Um, that's not even a fourth, that's just a new third. <laughs> not the best feeling in the world. Hive is on the way, as the station bit did, did finish up. <clears throat> Upgrades are even, and now Panda Baby will take engagements off of Crete, but he has such a dominant position. I guess he could have a more dominant one, like maybe up to 65 drones and a fifth base on the way. This one's not even really mining, um, as it was denied for some time. 
and maybe waiting for a few more rounds of reinforcements. Be absolutely sure that if you take an engagement, you won't just throw the game. I think that enemy's got it. This is really the last army for a Terran. And more cities are going to go down to another really good Ling run by. Okay, only two went down. That wasn't as dramatic as the last one. That queen's gonna be cleaned up too. I don't know. I, I mean, Panda Baby isn't running away with the supply quite yet, but that has a, a lot to do with he's still upgrading. He is still getting to that really, I think, a better drone count, and he is trying to get to Hive. So. He'll probably still be accruing a bank for the next two minutes while he waits for the Ultra Scarven to finish, but eventually that supply should just burst, and it should be in very good units, aka Ultralis and well-upgraded Lings. And while Terran has a lot of Marauders to focus fire Ultralisk with, that usually is not enough. Hmm. Lings attacking, Muta's getting some free supply depots maybe. Nope, they decided to turn around and help with the main engagement. A couple of Liberators can always complicate things. Especially when the Mutas run into the Liberators. Looks like they want to siege up? I don't know about that. This is his last push. Like, this is... This is it. The SCDs are taking off the mineral line, but can he do it? It's an even army supply, even upgrades. Army moves in, Mutas on top of the Liberator trying to magic box against them. Doesn't work out too badly, and the Baneling hits are just so good on creep as well. And that's gotta be tap out time, right? Is it Cody? Come on. No, he's still gonna try and, and stay in it. He's got like no medevacs, a <laughs> single one, single liberator. Barely any units on the ground. That's it. Oh, you just want to attack something? There we go. That's 16 mutas, and they do have plus two. Uh, they're about to have plus two carapace, but alright, there's the tap out. GG. Panda me takes the, uh, well, not the lead back. He just evens it up. 1-1. One, one. Going back to EU now, though, and because of that, so we'll be taking a two-minute break, so see you soon. All right, things, start things started a little bit quicker, <clears throat> but thanks for watching those ads. We are in the third match of the overall best of five and the third match of this specific best of three. It's now tied up thanks to a good game on Frost from the Zerg player. But in the top left, back on his European account, so I can continue to try and pronounce his name, but probably be inconsistent and fail regardless. It is the Teal Terran for Team France. Easy Koti. In the bottom right, for Team USA, it is Root Panda Bear Me. I already, you know, was pretty harsh about the last game and just I didn't really like the build. Um, I don't know what Uzi Cody was thinking when he decided to go for it. Maybe he's had a lot of success with just piling on the aggression against worse Zerg players, and maybe he severely underestimated Panda Bear Me based off of that first game where he got kind of a free win. You know, he just he did his build, then he won. It's like playing against the AI, right? And that that actually might be a hundred percent it, to be honest. If you think that you're just going to be better or that. Specifically, the Zerg player is going to suck versus aggression. Yeah, okay, go for an aggressive build, even on a map that doesn't necessarily favor it. Or, well, more accurately, the spawn positions that don't favor it. Okay, that, that I can see being the case. And as such, I'm not, like, so, like, eh, what the hell are you doing, bro? But it was still not the best build, I think, for it. And it did not work out. So Panda Remy is still holding strong for Team USA. As the overall series is tied 1-1. Uh, there is still a strong chance to go to the ace match. Will, will just be a best of one uh, coin flip for the server. There's always uh, also a chance that the next next game, the next series between Bales and Shadon, will just end it all um, for whatever team <laughs> is in the lead. Now, that's actually a bit of a different build here, by the way. So the Reaper gets in here, very annoying. Almost kills a drone. Almost. Kills uh, but this second barracks, it's almost like, it's almost like bait, like, hey, Overlord, look, I have a second barracks. It's not a tech lab on here, it's a reactor, but, you know, don't, don't pay attention to that. 
because uh, it is going to be a third Rax, and it's going to be multiple Reapers after a Command Center. Uh, Quay? Hmm. That's interesting. So, what's funny is that if Panda Bear Me never scouts this, because he's like, oh, this guy's in the same build every single time, what's the need of scouting? I don't think he'll do that, though. He's still bothering to get overload speed. Um... Okay, yeah, there's a chance that he just doesn't have an army. He's like, well, if he's doing the same thing, he won't be ready for another two minutes, so I, I, I'm i sure, I, you know, I'm fine, I'm okay. For another minute and a half. But that won't be true if it's just as many Reapers as possible, and it certainly won't be the same type of defense. <laughs> you know, grenades really complicate things. Uh, that's a, that's very, ooh, it's questionable. I really, I really wonder if this is gonna work. Huh. Huh. Well, things are about to get a little weird as the Reapers do show themselves pretty quickly. Um, it's a nice number of them, but you know, this is a point where Panda Remy thinks, okay, there's nothing going to be happening. All I need to do is keep building. Oh, wait a second. Hey, wait a minute, there's Reapers here. So he does have queens. You know, this, the whole plan around Zerg nowadays is to get as many queens as possible, and you gotta start that production pretty early to have a good number of queens with a good number of transfuses. And queens do decently against reapers uh, when they're in lower numbers, like seven or below. Once they get above that number, they their grenade potential is just so huge. And as long as the grenades keep the reapers all alive, that was close, then Pandarini should be okay. And keep in mind, this is at a big sacrifice to Uzakodi's tech. Not a factory, not a starport, no stim. Uh, no anti-air, you know, if Aspire is on a way. And the hatchery could be transfused, I think that's what he's planning on doing, yeah. But his Roaches and Ravagers aren't ready, so I don't think that that was the right choice. These Reaper numbers aren't dying, and that means they're gonna come back later. Or continue just sticking around, and that hatchery is still gonna go down. So that was a little too bold from Panda Bear Me, who's now lost her transfuses for the Queens. Keep in mind, it's just a weird build that, like... You know, he's faced earlier three Rax Reaper, we didn't have to worry about a third base. Here, he just was a little overconfident, thinking like, what the hell are you doing, man? And has definitely um, hurt his chances. He's not building roaches either to build Ravagers, he's just spending more and more Lings to try and survive. The upgrades aren't going to be too helpful, even if they do finish. And this is kind of working. He's going to upgrade while this is happening? Double engineering bay, no third CC, no, no stim, alright, like, whatever, whatever, do what you, what you can. This is now a little bit bold from Uzikoti though. Going into the back like this, running out of room to maneuver your reapers, that is dangerous stuff, and a lot of these reapers are pretty low. Uh, does still take out a good chunk of lings, takes out a couple of queens, and it still kind of works. It looks, yeah, actually I think it's snowballing. Hand me just not getting roaches, that's helpful. And you know, that third base never died. <laughs> that should, just tap it. Okay, there we go. Splat. Okay, good. He kills the third base, but the roaches are able to push us back. I think, more importantly, the maneuver to the back of this base was what helped push this back. But, you know, what What? What happens now? No stem, no combat shields. Medivacs, yes. Um, scary medivac drops, not so much. Grenades still available from some Reapers can certainly help with the main push, but you... You don't want to push into an army without stim. You can technically drop without stim, sure, but... This is very odd. Well, the Overlord's gonna come back in here and be like, are you going for something even weirder beyond this? And it's just not really. It is just bio and everything that you would usually see had it not started off with like 15 plus Reapers. Hmm. If he had kept all his Reapers alive, probably snipe spaces. That was a lot of Reapers that he had. But, um... Gonna catch up on upgrades, just because, you know, Panda Me was... Yeah, you know, he lost a lot of drones. He's still out of very bad drone counts. Didn't take all his gases. Can't really afford to go for 2-2. Two -two. Unfortunately, was, you know, he's forced to make roaches, which he might not have wanted to do. He might have wanted to go from Mew to Ling Bling, and now is this awkward position where, like, well, I have so many roaches, should I go ahead and upgrade them? But they don't have upgrades. My, my lings do. Should I just play the Roach, uh, Rouger, and Fester style with melee upgrades? Uh, you know, it's 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 a hard time right now for for Panda Bear and me and Uzi Cody. He is moving across the map, timing us out with Stim, and it's it's a lot of Marines. 
I mean, it kind of was this, it's the same deal, I guess, as earlier Three Rex Reaper, where you still have technically a lot of production for the transfer over into Marines. But it just came so late, it was a uh, questionable timing. Overlord dies, supply blocks Panda Bear and Mean, that they had a lot of minerals and gas to use anyway, but he now realizes, oh god, I'm supply blocked. And that's not enough of an army. Stim is almost done. Reaper's gonna go in and uh, kill a couple of drones, looks like. Base. There, it's Stim done. Okay, that's that's gonna be it for the roaches. Uh, more roaches are on the way. Oh, uh, I don't think Uzi Cody had to lift. He could've just stutter stepped and, and ran away. But wanted to go for the main base, it looks pretty tempting, I suppose. Hmm. Not fully unloaded. Six drones went down to the Reapers, more going down to the Marines down. Panami just gonna tap out. GG, what an odd third game, but it does go to Uzi Cody and goes to France. So let's update that score. To France. Next match will be Bales versus Shadone. They do have all their maps chosen. But O Gaming will be going for a five to eight minute break, and as such, so will I. So thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the games. See you soon.